Huge bug. Hi, Tristan. We in here. Hey, Justin. <laughs> What's up? So this is my homeboy Lee. He kind of he kind of work as like the producer. Okay, nice to meet you, Lee. Nice to meet you as well. I won't be on here. You don't have to look at my face the whole time. It's all good. <laughs> oh, no, no. Get off. He'll be trying to holler at you the whole fucking show. You know what I'm saying? I go line them eyebrows up and be like, hey. Nah. All right. Yeah, he was about to get his eyebrows threaded for this interview. <laughs> man, what's been up, Tristan? What's going on, Justin? What, what are we doing, man? I mean, I'm doing a podcast because I'm unemployed. So... <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Hey, so that's why I want to talk to you. So hold on. Before we get into it, first of all, um, I want to let you know the reason I started the, the platform Urban Legends Podcast because I've been wanting to do it for like two years. And then when the pandemic happened, I finally had time to, to do it. Um, and I did it because I want to celebrate people I consider living legends and people I feel like are making legendary moves in their career. Um, and definitely when I first started the, the, the platform, of course, all the MacGyver fans was like, you need to have Tristan on. Yeah, Tristan, Tristan and Lucas. Y'all was the two. Tristan, they ain't give a fuck about nobody else. Tristan and Lucas. <laughs> Tristan and Lucas. Um, and so when I started back, I was like, yo, I got I to gotta hit up Tristan. Um, but yeah, man. So that's, that's the reason why I'm doing this. You know what I'm saying? Because you the homie. Uh, I'm going to say your credits. MacGyver, Vampire Diaries, The Christmas Sitters, which is... One of my personal faves. I watched really? it. Really? You watched it? Yeah, I watched it. I liked it. Oh, I didn't even know. Thanks, Justin. Uh, Thunderstruck <laughs> with Kevin Durant. Right. <laughs> we all have fun. <laughs> we all have a few of those. You know? Yeah. House, par do, yeah. house Party Tonight's the Night. And, oh, that's uh, my shit. Yeah, that's my shit. And my favorite, uh, Gullah Gullah Island. You know. Oh, Justin, you see, you never told me none of this stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? I checked in on Gullah Gullah Island when I was young, you know? All right, that's five dang years. You never once told me you watched that show. You yeah, know, I watched it, but you know that was right when I was getting a little older. So I probably saw like you know a couple episodes. I feel it. I feel it. Um, but yeah, Tristan, what have you been? How you been dealing with like the cancellation, of MacGyver? <laughs> the cancellation. <laughs> the non-renewal. I don't know. For me, it's more like um, an evolving period. Um, I felt like we had a great run. I felt like we all killed it this last season and like did the most we could do with our characters. At this point, if we got extra seasons, it would just be like bonus rounds, you know? Straight but up. I felt like, um, I don't know, if it's time for us to move on, it's time for us to move on. We just gotta do it, move on, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course, I would love to get another season if that's what's in the cards, but if not, then it's just time to keep moving on, keep moving forward. Upgrade season. Upgrade season. Are you, is there, I, like I had Henry Winkler on yesterday. He did an episode, yeah, he did an episode. And I was asking him about how he was transitioning from the Fonz to, you know, his career after that, you know, and how he was like, that was kind of a scary moment. You know, and he was saying for me, like Justin, I know it's probably a scary moment for you to not know exactly what's next. Um, how, how, is there any fear? Is there any anxiety or like, I don't really know what's next or what? Honestly, no. Um, I've kind of mentally prepared myself for this in season one. I kind of feel like when you're on a show, you should always mentally prepare yourself for it to possibly be the end after every season. So, you know, I don't know. I, I feel really great about the future. Right I don't even know what else to say. I, I feel like something's going to come before the end of the summer, and I don't, I don't have to worry about it. And if it doesn't, that's fine, too. I don't right. know. That's kind of where, where I am in life. You know, I'm, I'm working on my own stuff. I'm perfecting my own crafts and stuff behind the scenes. I'm taking dance lessons. Oh, nice. I'm doing, yeah, I, what, actually, ty what type of dance lessons? I haven't told anyone this, so I'm saying it now, but I actually started taking ballet lessons again in uh, January. That's fire. I was doing it the whole time we were on the show. I was taking private ballet lessons with literally the black swan of Atlanta. She's incredible. Um, That's crazy. Just, what do you like plan to do with that? You have like a movie project or something or what? Well, you know what? There's, there's a couple things in the air right now that I've been trying to put out there. Um, one of them is a new series. It's the new Flashdance series. Oh, fire. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So I kind of just been mentally and physically preparing myself for that. And if not, then it's just for myself, you know. Um, aside from that, 
I'm like working on my own stuff, like my own short films and stuff. I might be directing a film toward the end of summer. That'd be dope. Tristan's gonna yeah. be an amazing director, everybody. Oh, thanks, Justin. Um, so that's that's about it. At the same time, I've also been taking time off and relaxing and just enjoying myself. Straight up. A couple parties here and there. Yeah, man. Yeah, I missed the one at her party, yo. Tristan gives uh, halfway di directions, everybody. She invited me to her house. She gave me half of the directions. It was late. I don't know what I had been doing all day. I was already tired. I was like, you know what? I'm going to miss this party. Guys, I'm like, convinced Justin doesn't like me. I have the easiest <laughs> address. Everyone and their mama can find my place. I sent him, I sent him like three pins. He was still on the other side of Atlanta. Like, where did you live? He doesn't want to come. It's okay. All he had to say was he didn't want to come. I was at the gate, but I was at the wrong gate. She got two different gates at her place. I yeah, was at the wrong one. And he was like, F it. I ain't driving around the corner. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> hey, that's my energy, yo. I'm on a real <laughs> fuck, fuck it energy right now. Hey, I, this is what, what I feel. I feel like I'm getting older. And I think I'm a nice person to everybody. Um... But when it comes to like dealing with certain shit, I'm just over it. I'm like over certain shit. It's just like, it is what it is. You know, I'm gonna be a good human being. But at the same time, if I feel like something isn't, I don't know. If it don't, if it's just like, I feel like out of the way or crazy to me, I'm just like, man, fuck it. I'm just fuck it. <laughs> I'll go home. At uh, the same time, it's like, what if that was the last time you ever saw me? <laughs> in life and you were like i ain't driving 30 seconds <laughs> after that i'm on a new wave of life <laughs> guess what I, guess what i would be like i'm like ah oh, fuck i mean you know in the next life in the next life <laughs> hey, are you auditioning because um what you doing right you auditioning have you auditioned any are you like um yeah, I've been putting a couple things on tape. You know, everything's on Zoom now. Everything's on uh, on tape auditions. I, I screen tested for a show last week. Didn't go for whatever reasons. Um, right. So yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I will say that after MacGyver, there's like a new energy I have towards that part of the process. Because it was always a little scary for me thinking about going back into, you know, the audition world. But now it's like, it doesn't even feel the same. What you what you mean by that when you say you have a different energy towards it? I just I feel like there's nothing to worry about anymore. There's no one I'm trying that hard to impress anymore. It's like I don't even know how to explain it. Well, I guess I guess well, like before MacGyver, even though I had acted on ton of different ton of different things, there would still be like a certain level of uh, nerves that would come into my body before meeting a director or producer or stuff like that. And after MacGyver you know, being around these people every day, day in, day out, you know, some of these people are just starting out. It's like, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> There's really nothing to worry about. They're just people. They're just like me. I just got to go in there and do my thing. And it's really not a big deal. And if it's meant for me, it'll be for me. And if it's not, it's not. Straight so, up. There's no I know more my, nerves. my reps. Oh, my bad. I cut you off. What, what were you saying? I was just saying there's no more nerves and there's no more like, I just feel like there's nothing to worry about anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, I feel like that's when I always book stuff, when I didn't care. You know, when I went in there, I was like, fuck it. You know, it is what it is. If you like it, you like it. <laughs> I guess my fucking energy, <laughs> I guess, kind of started years ago, but it just heightened even more so now. But I know my reps are probably pissed because they, they've been sending me stuff. And I'm like, I've been passing on a lot of auditions. Mm -hmm. One, because some of the shit, honestly, is probably ego or pride. Some of the stuff I'm like, I'm not auditioning for this. Like, of course. Like, like best friend roles on a one hour show. I'm like, I just did that. Like, if they want to see me audition, tell them to go watch an episode of MacGyver. Like, and then, so that's how I am on some stuff. And then other stuff, I'm just like, if I'm, I don't know, we're not hurting for money yet, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, at the same time, I'm like, at the same time, I'm up for the challenge too, you know, okay. to, try to, to earn it. Because I feel like it shit just feels better when you earn it, you know? Straight up. Um, I don't know. I don't know, but I feel you. Like I'm, I'm like fifty fifty on that. I, I, I'll agree with you when because, like I said, MacGyver was an offer, and mm -hmm. I will say that was my first time feeling kind of nervous. I had been offered another pilot before, but this shit, MacGyver was like already picked up. It's going on the air. They offered me this role. And I was like, shit, like at the table read, y'all don't know this, but I'm thinking like, I gotta fucking be good because it's like, 
I didn't do an, or a traditional audition, you know? So what if they like, no, nah, second thought, we don't want Justin. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. I mean, cause that shit happens. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people get fired after them table reads. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huh. All right. Well, it's good to know you're in good spirits and you got your, you got your shit together. Um, How but you know, you? How's everything? I'm good, man. I mean, I'm on a real, I mean, y'all already know this. My whole thing is like ownership. My whole thing is like, I'm at a point where I realize true freedom for me is doing my, my own shit. Um, okay. And so that's what I love about stand up and the podcast and the music. It's like, I could just do whatever I got to do. I don't need nobody permission. Um, and I could just put out shit when I want to put it out. And I don't know. I, that's what I kind of love. I would love nothing more, honestly, than to like, have a podcast or you know or my own tv show but some shit that i have legitimate ownership over i'm a producer uh i would love to be on some Issa ray donald glover type shit mm-hmm. um and i could kind of dictate how creative control and stuff like that and don't feel like i don't know i don't want a boss <laughs> i get it <laughs> I don't, you know i don't and even i know if i work for a network i technically quote unquote have a boss Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's some type of leverage where I'm like, nah, I'm not doing that, you know, or, I, you know, I don't know. But to kind of like, I don't know, man, just even like have to get permission from a showrunner about something. I'm kind of over that. And, yeah. and, and the showrunners are cool. Our last showrunner, Monica, fire as hell, you know, but the thing is like, still, it's just like, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to have to ask nobody to do nothing, you know. You want to be a show writer. Yeah, I get it. So, I mean, that's kind of where I'm at. And I'm big on, like, real estate right now. I'm trying to make sure I have – I'm trying to get another piece of property just so I can have some, another stream of revenue coming in because once I have another piece of property, I'm good, good when it comes to being able to not have to worry about um, doing some TV show or some shit I don't want to do. Exactly. You know, so it's like I'm halfway there when it comes to just like a legitimate revenue stream coming in and I just focus on the shit I, I feel like doing. Like, you know, doing a doing a podcast and making no money for, from it. So <laughs> love and it eventually it will. Eventually it'll come back. Straight up. Um are you looking in Atlanta or Florida? Atlanta and Florida. I've been looking at property. So it's really just whichever one come back the best. You know what I'm saying? I'm just weighing my options. I you know, I found one piece of property down in Florida that seemed decent and i'm looking at some up here so i'm actually in atlanta right now i do my podcast when i'm in atlanta because my homeboy we got a sharpie and we fucking oh, <laughs> oh okay <laughs> <laughs> all right okay that right there is what's keeping you in atlanta <laughs> <laughs> no nah, but I, I i'm out here looking at uh some property right now too so that's 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 the other thing. So I want to get to know about your background more, Tristan. Okay, because that's what people want to know. Tell us where you you. I know you was born in New York, right? And I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, there you have it. Five years, baby. Uh, I but see that's the thing about you because you've been all over. So tell me, like, you was born in New Orleans. How did you get to New uh, New York? And how was um, my dad was in the military, so we got transferred everywhere. We moved out of New Orleans. I was eight months old and moved straight to New York, and that's where I grew up. That's where I did my first movie. I did. Uh, actually, went to Florida to shoot Gullah Gullah Island. Nice. Orlando? Uh, yeah. Shot yep. in Orlando, Universal Studios. Uh, after that, I went back to New York, did Broadway for two or three years, did Lion King. Yeah, that's fine. How did you get in that? So I was going to ask you about that. How did you get that so young? How did you even get interested in acting so young? Was that you wanted to do that? Or was your parents like, she's a adorable baby and let's get her started? Or what so was that? My, my brother was in it before me. My brother's a year and a half older. He was, he was doing modeling and stuff as a baby. And I wanted to do the same thing he was doing. So before I was old enough to know what I was doing, my parents put me into it. Um, I was two when I first started, started doing wow. modeling, commercials, stuff like that. I was advertising like the little toys you'd see in Toys R Us and Play School and Baby Gap and stuff like that. Um, and just went from there. And then when I was about 10, 11 years old, uh, it was right before 9-11, we moved to California. Um, in pursuit of acting or, or was that a, your dad in the military my thing? My dad was in the military, got transferred to California. We had been, I mean, my parents had been trying to get there for years, so it finally happened. And then when I when I got there, I booked Alias, and then after that, it was Disney and Nickelodeon stuff back to back. Everybody hits Chris movies, 
Man, grind, grind, grind. Well, I was gonna ask you about that because how was your grind? Like, what was some of the like the obstacles or, or struggles you kind of faced prior to uh, Vampire Diaries and, and MacGyver? Not being a name, you know. She's perfect, but we want this person. Uh, she's amazing. So if this person turns it down, it's hers. Um, I was always the second runner up to something because I didn't know someone or, you know, I wasn't a name or because they didn't know exactly what race I was, you know, before MacGyver, uh, there, there was not a big diversity push at all. That kind of happened recently. This mm -hmm. huge diversity push to bring color and different ethnicities onto TV and, you know, allow us to wear our natural hair and stuff like that. Um, there was a time where I could never wear my hair curly couldn't because they would never look at me and say she's black they would say what is she we're gonna go with this person you know so i would start straightening my hair because it would make me fit into roles that were like latina or mexican or italian i could fit into all these other ethnicities if i straightened my hair um honestly that's when i started booking a ton of roles and then i always told myself like once i got my own show one day i would wear my hair however i wanted it straight up I didn't get to that till macgyver honestly Wow, I didn't know that. Uh, I heard T and Tamira Maori talk about that, how they couldn't wear their hair curly back in the day. Or... Yeah, it was not a thing. It was not a thing. And, um, you know, I, I guess right before MacGyver, it became difficult because once they, once they had their few girls that somewhat looked like me, you know, the Zendayas, the Tessa Thompson, uh, the, uh, the one from Atlanta, once they kind of had them. Zazie, is it Zazie B? Yeah, once they kind of had them, then... I wasn't even a thought, you know, it's like, oh, we have our girls, you know? So it was still hard after that. I, um, I honestly- What, what do you identify yourself as though? I'm black. Right. I'm black. I know that my skin is fair, but I identify myself as black. Um, that, that, that just is what it is. Let me tell you something. I remember the first time you told me that. Do you remember when you told me that? You probably don't. Uh, we had our table read or something. We all went out to dinner um like that oh. night or later or whatever right before season one and i was like what's your ethnicity and you was like i'm black i am a black woman but you said it so like firm you was firm in the way you said it. i was like oh shit all right you know because but i mean i'm sure that's something you've dealt with your entire your entire life you know what but whatever what are the um I don't know the different, different, ethnicities, like different yeah, ethnicities. ethnicities that you made up of. So people that don't know. Yeah, I'm Native American, which you can probably see a lot more of. Um, there's a little bit of French in there and then black. And my mom is fair skinned like me. Both of her parents were half and half. So she's very fair skinned. Um, my dad is your skin tone. So this is just how I came out. But um, yeah, I would never like if someone asked me my ethnicity, I wouldn't just say all oh, mixed. Like that just doesn't feel right. Cause like, duh, but what am I, you know, black. Did, were you homeschooled or did you go to regular school? A little bit I was of both. I was homeschooled from first grade to seventh grade. Then I got thrown into public school for eighth grade <laughs> through 10th. And I mean, thrown in. You went to like, Shawshank. <laughs> I mean, the day, the day I got to school, a kid had just died like the day before from getting punched at the temple. He died on the basketball court. And I was like, okay, here we go. Welcome to the real world, Tristan. <laughs> Damn, yeah, but how, and so I wanted to know how was that like being biracial um, at, um, at, at, at school? Did you have any issues or, or what? You know what? There's always going to be issues, but only within your own race. You know, um, I will say that I nipped that in the bud pretty quickly. Because going into that school, everyone knew I was from Gullah Gullah Island. Everyone knew I was that girl from TV. So immediately they wanted to find reasons to make fun of me or make it like I was a goody goody. And I wasn't none of that shit. Right. <laughs> so real quickly, I had to let them know I was just like them. And not Trist, is a, Trist is a thief, everybody. She stole <laughs> all the fucking <laughs> food and snacks. If uh -uh. she's ever on your set, yo, she's stealing all the craft services snacks, yo. <laughs> it wasn't that I like dumb myself down or anything. I just let them know like, yo, we're the same. I know I was on TV, but that doesn't make me no different than you, you know? I'll still whip your ass. Okay. All so, right. There's a lot of men out there that's like, please do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they would love nothing more for you to have a reason to touch them. I guess they just thought it would be easy to like punk me or make me feel scared. And I'd be like, let's, let's go. You want to fight? Let's fight. And it made them like, whoa, well, I don't want to get beat up by her. 
uh, what if she really can kick my ass? So I kind of got away with a lot of shit by, by being like that. Um, of course, I had to learn, I had to know how to dance. You were not accepted in school. And you were not black if you did not know how to dance. Straight up, straight so, up. You know, I learned how to dance. That evolved into me crumb dancing. <laughs> I was on three different crump crews all the way from eighth grade to 10th grade. It was wild. I was a captain of my cheerleading team. I had a good time in high school. Okay. <laughs> I had a very, very good time. I was very different than I am now. I was very different. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. So, when you when you booked MacGyver, because that was your first series regular, other than like a Gullah Gullah Island, was that the first one you had in a while? First one. Yeah. How how what was your feeling like when you booked it? Um, just as since you had been an actor that did a lot of uh, guest star and recurring roles up until that point. Well, to be honest, I've told the story only a few times, but the day I auditioned for MacGyver was the day I quit acting. I, I had quit. And I didn't quit in a way where I was like, F this, you know, I'm never booking anything. It wasn't like that. It was more of a, okay, I've done everything I could possibly do. I've done my best. I've tried my hardest. Maybe I should open myself up to what's really meant for me, you know, and I'm ready for that. And I went into it with a good attitude, but I said, I'm done and I'm, and I'm happy, you know? Um, it was my birthday. It was June 10th. I remember snapping a picture of myself right outside the audition room, just cause I was just in such a weird space and I, I quit. I was done. I wanted to take my last picture in the audition room. I walked in that room. It was the best audition I ever had. I just was myself. I had completely said F it. And, um, I booked it straight from there. Damn, that's I crazy. Like, I had felt like every hardship, every callback, producer session, screen test, rug ripped out from under me. Everything I had been through in this whole career led up to that one audition. That's what I felt like. And it was almost as if, it was almost as if God said, if you go in this audition with a good attitude, you can have it. Hmm. And I did. My life's changed ever since. Damn. So, that's crazy. Do you ever feel... Or have you ever felt like there was uh, casting directors that didn't, like, mess with you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one or two in particular. But um, <laughs> at that, at that, honestly, I'll be honest, at that point in my career, I was so done with everything that I started approaching them about the issues and just, what is the problem? Why, why don't you like me? I've, I've been in here so many times. You always say terrible things to my agency when I leave the room, but never to me. What is the issue? We never said that. We love you so much. We never uh, said any of those things. After that, great. But it was like something in me said, I don't care if this person never wants to see me again. I'm going to address this because I'm tired of coming in here feeling this energy that I don't like. What is it for? You know? So, yeah, that was a, that was a pivotal moment in my life. And then MacGyver was just that one thing that that changed everything and now it's like i feel like i can do anything straight up yeah well i I had asked that question because there's definitely a casting director that i feel like don't fuck with me and the problem is she casts every black movie (laughs) in hollywood and it's like i'm like oh i'm sure i know who that is (laughs) yeah exactly so it's like yo i i keep getting these auditions for the projects that she's casting but i'm like the last few auditions that I've sit, submitted is like, I get no, no feedback, no callback. And I'm like, yo, I know yeah. I'm not trash. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, what, what, what's the real problem here? Yeah. Like, you know, what's the real problem? Do you feel like when you approach the casting director, it helped? Or do you think they probably was like, man, fuck that bitch. What you, th- what, what you yeah, think? It always helped. Okay. Um, in particular, there was two casting directors I actually really liked them. And they casted Vampire Diaries. I had gone in for that show for the lead of Vampire Dice before the show came out for Kat Graham's role. I had gone in for every role, every female role under the sun that that show ever brought in over like the whole five seasons. I had been in that room for 19 different roles Damn. over the years. And finally, I remember crying before I walked in there because I didn't want to go in there so bad. I was just like, God, I just, geez, I'm just wasting so much gas money and freaking meter money parking at this place. No, I'm not going to get it. That's it. I don't care if they never want to see me again. I'm going to go in and tell them I'm never coming back. So I did. <laughs> Straight up. I walked in. 
And I did my audition. And I know I did a good job. And, I, and they said, thank you so much, Tristan. And I said, you know what, guys? I really appreciate you guys always bringing me in, but I've, I've been in here for 19 different roles. And I'm not, I can't come back anymore. And they laughed. At first they were like, oh, well, you know, if it's not this role, we'll definitely bring you in for the next one. And I was like, no, no, I don't think you guys understand. I can't come back in here anymore. That's all I have to say. And I booked the role before I got home. Hmm. Damn. Damn. And you yeah. know, I like I knew when I walked in, I was gonna say that. And I was like, they're gonna never wanna see me again after this. I don't care. I've already been in here a million times. They're never gonna book me. And I went in there and I said that. Producers are in Atlanta, so I was like, you guys just put in a good word for me in Atlanta, please, to the producers, because I can't come back anymore. Right. And I booked it before I even made it home. And I don't know if it's because I just said that and they're like, oh well, yeah, why don't we just book Tristan? Or if it was just my time. I do not know. Right. All I know is it's just like, if you feel something in your gut, just do it. Just do it. Yeah. Um, so one of the best things my, my old manager told me was like the power in saying no. Um, and Hollywood is so crazy. It's something about saying no, or I don't want you that make them want you more. Mm -hmm. It's a weird, weird, I don't know. Yeah, it's very strange. It's, it's very strange. So now I just know it's okay to be honest about your feelings. Because what, what have you really got to lose at the end of the day? Nothing. Not a Nothing. damn thing. Nothing but more money and gas money and, and your soul. <laughs> <laughs> I, lost, I lost my soul a long time ago <laughs> in Hollywood. <laughs> hey, so, <laughs> so what'd you say? That's my story. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that's, I mean, well, that's good to know because I'm telling you, anybody that's hearing this or watching this, they're thinking you're so beautiful. First of all, the first time I saw Tris and everybody, I was, I was blown away. I, I, you know, I'm like everybody else. It's so funny because I've been in rooms with Tristan when other people see her for the first time in person. <laughs> and so I'm like, yes, yes, I remember that moment. You know, <laughs> it's like seeing a, a fawn or like a, <laughs> or some type of deer. You're like, holy shit, that's fucking, that's real. Oh, um, thanks, Justin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I brought that up. Oh, but this is why I brought that up. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that would see you on TV and in films and stuff like that, and they don't know the struggles that you may have faced. They just see you're beautiful, you're on TV, and you you have it made. And they don't understand like the work and the grind that goes into getting to where you're at, even looking the way you look. Absolutely. Honestly, um, that held me back because people think it's a compliment for people to say, for someone to say, oh, she's too beautiful for this role, or she's too unrealistic. It would never work out with this role because she's too pretty. She doesn't look edgy enough. She doesn't look this enough because she's too this, you know? It's not a compliment. Um, whenever I will tell people like, oh, the cash director actually said I was too pretty for the role. They're like, oh, wow, it's the best compliment. I'm like, no, it's not because I'm broke. Right, <laughs> right. I don't have a job yeah. right now. Someone else is getting this role and I'm not getting it because I'm too pretty. That actually hurts a lot. Um, it just made me want to do everything to just like dumb myself down and mess up my hair and, you know, just to stop that from happening. Mm. So yeah, there's, there's pros and cons. That, that actually was a big con for me um, before MacGyver. Yeah, same, 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 same thing for me, I want to say also. You know, I used to walk in rooms. <laughs> <laughs> they would say, Justin, you're just too goddamn handsome. Uh, you know, so I fucking grew my beard out. <laughs> you know what it's like? But no, for real, like, um, like I, don't, I honestly don't even understand how I got the role of Riley because normally computer hackers don't look like me. They look mm. like... Um, you know, I guess a person you would consider a nerd or someone who's very incognito or, you know, someone not noticeable, I guess. That's, that's what they always say. But I was really blessed to have been given the opportunity to do that role and just change kind of the stigma of computer hackers. Yeah. No, straight up. I wish we, yes. we, 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 we wish all hackers look like you, Tristan. Oh, uh, you. <laughs> what? It's like it's possible for a girl like me to be on drugs. It's possible for someone like me to have gone to prison. Looks do not matter, you know? So 
Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? I think it's just going to take that that one role for somebody to see. I mean, because you even look at somebody like a Holly Berry. Somebody like a Holly Berry was able, she's so great of an actress that people were forced to see her in other lights and let her do other things. Um, you you go she, probably have to play a crackhead. That's probably what you got to do. You remember what she had to do to get that role? Which one? The crackhead role. I hope she had to suck a dick. <laughs> what, what did she have to do? I don't know the story. In one of her first projects, Halle Berry, they told her she was too beautiful to ever be able to play crackhead. She couldn't do it. She begged them for another chance. This woman literally didn't shower for like 10 days straight. Went in there looking completely crazy acted her butt off and they gave her that role. But that's what she had to do in order to get it. Wow, I didn't know that. She literally put herself in the shoes of someone who would be on crack and go in there and prove them wrong because they had already told her no. Damn. Well, you know, and that's that's the importance too, you know, for anybody listening. uh, And for you, which you already know, the power, the importance of you writing and producing your own material, Mm -hmm. you know, or at least producing your own material if you're not writing um, so you can find that perfect project that caters to you uh, so people can see everything else that you can bring to the table. Absolutely. So I know you dealt with, um, I mean, we've, we've all dealt with uh, like uh, crazy work environments, right? Sometimes with just, you know, the schedules and people and stuff like that. I want to know, how did you maintain like your sanity? <laughs> <laughs> doing a show like MacGyver because what people don't know is like the workload that could kind of come along with it. The, the long hours, uh, dealing with different personalities. Mm. It, and, uh, I, <laughs> I felt like you always was able to <laughs> maintain, you know, your composure. Uh, and so I, I didn't know if you like meditate, if you went to your parents or your boyfriend at the time, but like, how did you kind of get through those moments? Well, to be honest, I think it all had to do with my dog. I adopted mm. Sergeant probably six episodes in. Um, before I knew what I was doing, before I had really planted my feet, I adopted him and he changed everything because I didn't think I was going to make it. Um, <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> he, uh, he changed everything. He just re- would remind me to smile. As soon as I would see him, I could be literally about to cry. And as soon as I would see him, I'd forget. Um, I think he kind of helped me pull it back together. I'm also, you know, honestly, I've always been a very strong person. My parents raised me to be a very strong person that just lets things bounce off me. You know, I don't let things affect me to the core where it just makes me want to go hide in my room. I, I honestly, I've never had those feelings. I'm able to bounce negative energy off of me and I've made it a habit to do it. Like I make the effort to not let it affect me, you know? So I don't know. Um, also, just standing up for myself, you know, why, why should you ever be afraid of some other human being? Straight up. We're all the same. Stand up for yourself. Who cares what happens? That, that's probably the most, that's probably where strength comes from in standing up for yourself and staying true to yourself and not letting anyone change you for who you are or make you feel like you have to be anything else because of what they want to be or, you know. Letting their negative energy change you, can't do it. I can't do it. And that's probably something I developed from going to school. Mm-hmm. People who tried so hard to change me, people who tried to make me feel bad about myself because they felt bad about themselves. I would always know that they're only doing that because they feel bad about themselves. How can I make them feel better about themselves? You know, I'm just going to tell the truth. Straight up. So, yeah, I have, I have a feeling that high school probably prepared me for any bad work environment. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and from anything from here on out, I'm I'm ready for it. Right. Bring it. Straight up. What's <laughs> the biggest lesson you think you've learned uh, from working like professionally, and no 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 not, not like professionally and personally, working on a show like MacGyver? What's the biggest things that you you felt like you took away? Always treat other people with kindness and respect no matter how stressed or tired or upset you are, do not project that onto others. I've had to work hard to keep myself from doing that. There's been times where I've been so irritated or maybe one person in particular is annoying me so it makes me snap at someone else. And I catch that, you know, I check myself. Do not let that shit rub off on others. Like, 
And that's because I never like when people do it to me. If someone is irritated about something, I don't like when they project that onto me or treat me a certain way because they're irritated with everyone else. And I never want to do that. And so I make an effort to remind everyone else to do that too. Um, when I did the Christmas movie, you know, it was a very low budget movie. Everyone was really stressed. A lot of things were just not right about that whole production. And you know, as it, it was hard enough as it was already, but people are like snapping at each other and cursing at each other and yelling at each other. And someone has to treat this person bad to make someone else think they're doing their job. Or who can I throw under the bus? Who we throw under the bus? <laughs> that's a that's a song we made up on the set of MacGyver when somebody fuck up. We uh we sang a song who we throwing under the bus. <laughs> under the bus. I would notice people just doing that left and right. And I'm thinking in my head, yo, this product is way too small for everyone to be acting this crazy. I'm stopping this right now. And I did. I basically made a speech in the morning and I said, if I hear one more person address someone else with disrespect or snap or curse or yell, I will address you personally on the spot. Do we have an understanding? Everyone's like, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Every, everything was so good from that point forward. Everything was so good. Everyone realized nothing was that big of a deal. If something breaks, fix it. If continuity's wrong, F it, who cares? Like, <laughs> it's not a, a Michael Bay movie. Like, let's just have a good time. Like, you know, so I don't know. I just, I make an effort now to remind others to treat people with kindness and respect. Otherwise, we're not going to get through this. Right. What, what's the point of doing what we do if we're not happy doing it? Yeah, and people, you, you spend so much time on a set, you know, you're working on a film or TV. Like, uh, you want to make sure it's a, a safe space and a comfortable space because you're spending more time with the people on set than you are with your own family members. Exactly. exactly. Uh, so you want to be cool. <sighs> couple more questions I had. So this is what I wanted to know for you. Um, being, a, being a woman in, in Hollywood, uh, are there any struggles, do you think, that being a, a woman and a Black woman at that, that you're still facing uh, in the industry? Or have things gotten better? I think things have absolutely gotten better. I just think now we just have to be careful to make sure it stays that way, that we don't allow things to slip under the rug and you know, allow people to get away with things. Um, as hard as we worked to get where we are right now, you know, f finally getting our opportunities to play these roles and finally them giving chances to people of color, we have to make sure that we keep it that way and not get too comfortable. Um, if that makes sense. There's always gonna be struggles. Um, as a woman, we have to be on guard 24 seven. You know, as great as everything was in the MacGyver said, I had to be on guard 24 seven, you know? <laughs> because there's always something, there's always something. So in every situation that we're in, that's just, that's just kind of who we have to be. Um, I was going to ask you, I mean, have you felt like you dealt with any, I don't want to say like me too type situation, but was there any time that you felt uncomfortable? And if so, how did you maneuver or, you know, because I think that's important for, for women to like talk about. Um, so if there's another woman that might get into that situation, they'll kind of have the tools and kind of know how to navigate through that situation. Naturally for me, this is just something I developed growing up in this industry you know i never talked to anyone for too long never never put yourself in a situation that's gonna get you in trouble you know leave the party early don't stay right. too late don't go um, to a man's apartment at three o'clock in the morning that's yeah no meeting no meetings at anyone's house <laughs> no no dinner meetings hey i want to talk to you about a new project over dinner no thanks right call me on the phone you know i i would just learn to avoid those situations way before they go south because i didn't need them to go south I know it's going to go south. I don't need it. To. <laughs> I, like, come on. Why, why else is this happening? So, you know, and that's just something I, I carry with me. And oh, I was what, um, and then this, the, this is probably the last thing I had. I wanted to know, like, how do you handle dating being who you are? Like, how do you, cause I mean, the thing about, of course, like being on set, you know, we've seen it, we've been together for five years. So I, I've seen, you know, the, the, you know, the dating thing. I mean, from everybody, you, Lucas, Levi, everybody, you know, mm -hmm. um, how do you navigate dating in Hollywood? Do you feel like it's, 
is tough? Do you not know if a guy is for your intent? Like, what, how do you go, uh, you know, yeah. No, I, I think it's, for me, it's been great um, only because I, I only date people who I know are going to be great to me. You know, uh, sometimes people look and be like, why is she dating him? There's a reason for that. <laughs> because he treats me like a queen. I only date people who treat me with kindness and respect. Straight up. Um, someone who is 100% for me, you know, not worried about anyone else. Um, it is easier to date in your industry because they understand the schedules. We understand the times, the hours. They understand the relationships between your cast mates. They understand that stuff. It's not something you have to explain, you know. Um, and another thing for me is I, I usually date people that I've known for a while. That's just kind of how it happens. You, you know, eventually you, you know this person well enough and eventually the feelings arise, you know. And you date that person and if it doesn't work out, then you move on. But you stay friends. I, I never really have had a bad breakup or I never talk to that person again. It's usually pretty mutual or an understanding, you know, I'm always still friends after that. So I will say that for me personally, I've had a, I've had a pretty good dating experience in this industry. And that's probably because I just direct myself towards the right people to begin with. No, straight up. I remember when you and uh, Jesse T. Usher were together, I, I seen y'all in Atlanta. I was like, y'all are the most beautiful couple, uh, couple I've ever seen <laughs> in my life. <laughs> I was hoping y'all was going to stick together. I just wanted to see what the babies was going to look like, Aww. you know. <laughs> Jesse, Jesse T. Usher, one of the most talented people I know. Uh, we've been friends since I was about 17 and he was about 14. Wow. Long, long time. We, yeah, we met in 2006, 2007. I've been really close friends ever since. Um, our parents are close. You know, it's, it's just always been that. He's always been there, so... Yeah, he's he's a really great person. Yeah, yeah he's a great dude. He did a uh, episode of uh, uh, Urban Legends a while back, and uh, oh, su yeah, super nice dude, man. Super good dude for sure. Yeah, Talented, like you said. Talent. I didn't know how funny he was. Um, he's so funny. Yeah. He's so funny, and um, yeah, right now he's shooting season three of The Boys in Canada. Ooh, I love that show. Yeah. You know me, I, good show. Yeah, I'm a uh, The Boys groupie. I'm a groupie of, of, of a few things. Drake, I'm a Drakey, I'm a Drake groupie. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a I'm a groupie for Drake. I that, know. <laughs> and, and the boys, I'm a groupie for that oh, too. I think we're all groupies for the boys. Yeah, straight up. So, all right, what um, where do you want to see yourself? This is it. Where do you want to see yourself five, ten years from now? Okay, I'm gonna be perfectly honest. Uh, one of my acting idols is Helena Bonham Carter. She's the one who uh, was married to Tim Burton for a number of years. She does all the wonderful character roles like on Harry Potter. And right now she's on The Crown and she's on Alice in Wonderland and Sweeney Todd. And, you know, every, every role that she plays is like my dream role. That's what I want to do. I want to start a production company with someone else who has the same vision as me. I want to create our own projects together. Um, I, I noticed that what she did was she created like her own world in acting. So every role that she plays is this incredible character. And the energy of the the energy of the product she's doing is always the same. It's always like out of this world. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to step into a character role. Um, you know, I want to be given the opportunity to play a character role. I just have to be given the chance. So that's what I want. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to create those projects for myself. And that way, you know, at least I can be seen in that light. Um, I love to direct, of course. I want to direct probably before the end of this year. I want to try to direct a project. And I also love to edit. A lot of people don't know, but I love to edit videos. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. There, there's so many things. I'm, I'm writing a cookbook right now. Nice, that's fire. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things I'm dabbling in. I'm still learning to play electric guitar. I want to like start a band. Nice. Yeah, that's what I, I, I meant to ask you that, too, because I was like, I know you could you could sing and, and I was going to ask if you was going to kind of venture out into some of your other talents and uh, kind of showcase those. Yeah, it's time. You know, I've, I've had times where I was 100 percent into music. It's just hard. It's not as easy as it is right now to, like, do a song and put it out there. You know, oh, I know. Hard. I put out bullshit every day. Hey, there you go. <laughs> it, was not, it was not like that 10 years ago. It wasn't like that, you know. So now it's just like the sky's the limit. I'm going to do everything. Straight up. Well, hey, everything you just said is all going to come true. Uh, I'm a huge believer in that. I got faith in you. I know you're talented. You're funny. You're funny too, everyone. She's like super funny. Uh, she don't always show it 
like publicly i don't feel like yeah i mean you're doing your videos yo tristan's funny like you know <laughs> i gotta get her in like uh when i do a comedy movie one day and like have her be in it somehow but yo tristan's like like fu like funny funny like <laughs> like if y'all heard the shit we say about people <laughs> <laughs> off camera <laughs> y'all be dying laughing y'all and tristan's a sniper um yeah, Justin, yeah. You, you weren't on, man you weren't around enough man i had so much <laughs> shit i wanted to say now i'm gonna hold it in because i'm like no one's gonna get this joke <laughs> yeah i was somewhere <laughs> fucking who knows what i was doing staying warm yeah staying warm uh, yeah <laughs> my whole thing was how could i shoot this show and stay warm at the same time <laughs> <laughs> it really was fun though working with you justin and um uh, i know that my guy won't be the last time yeah straight up oh yeah yeah. this is just the beginning for us so um uh, yo you're a queen wish you nothing but continued success i love you um you know keep doing your thing i appreciate you for doing this like i said urban legends podcast i did this to celebrate people i consider living legends and making legendary moves in their career and uh that's you tristan may thank you so much justin i love you too all right i'm gonna let you go all right talk yeah. to you later bye lee lee's probably somewhere with a lotion ah. bottle in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> let me get off of here <laughs> I had a, I had a peanut, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich going over here. Oh, oh, that's hey. <laughs> but, uh, I was like, I was like, I was taking notes. I was like, I was like, how can I be a long term friend and treat her like a queen? You know, I, I, but I told Justin to ask that question. I said, I need you to ask this question. I don't, I know I'm your assistant, but slide a brother in there, you know. Oh my! Wait a minute, Justin. Is this the legendary assistant you've been talking about all this time? Well, he's been my assistant since season five. Wow. My cousin was my assistant. Ah uh, yes. Uh yeah for I'm for the, the. I'm the roach assistant. That's that's the one. Ah yes. Yo, tell her she yes. think the roach was a plant. She think it was fake. I think you planted it. I wish it was fake. I live in this old ass house, a bunch of trees. I'm I'm trying to be sexy. I'm a TikTok and shit. I ain't never fried chicken before. I'm like yeah, I'm a fried chicken with my shirt off. Got damn roach fucked wait, up. Wait wait wait. Don't fry nothing with your shirt off. Number one, that's a recipe for. Disaster. I know it was look. It was all clickbait. It was all clickbait, but it, it, it turned into the biggest damn clickbait of my life. Um, <laughs> how are you gonna how are you gonna top that though? You know what? I'm I'm you know, I'm just prone to crazy shit happening. So you know, I'm sure I keep posting something. Something else is gonna fucking pop yeah, off. And I think he's starting the OnlyFans soon. So you know, who hey, know? Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, I, are, are, you, are you are you happy? Anyone don't know? Lee started in a viral video. He was cooking with his uh with an apron on. A roach crawled out in the middle of his TikTok live and it fell into his food yeah. uh while he was cooking. And uh never seen. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. Um so shout out to Lee. Uh, and at one point, at least at least for about a hot 30 days, Lee was more famous than me. <laughs> we was in Atlanta and Lee was getting it in. Women was on him. Um uh, so shout out to Lee. Alright, yo, I'm out of here. Talk to you guys later.